Hi guys, it's Santa Rosa. Welcome to my channel, or welcome back to my channel. This video is about to get me in so much trouble. But a bitch said she's back, so she's back, and I am back. <laughs> Telling stories. I woke up and chose fucking violence today with this video. She's fearless. I'm not afraid of today's video at all. And this is gonna be so fun. I'm hoping that all parties of this video are fine with the story that I'm telling because it is a pretty harmless one in the grand scheme of my life. With that being said, not only is this video going to get me in so much trouble there is no way in hell with all of the people that this video is about that one of them isn't gonna come and take every dollar of the adsense on it as they should as i would so without further ado today's video is going to be sponsored by balesa plus balesa sex toys if you guys have been keeping up with my instagram stories lately you know i've been a frequent sponsor of balesa sex toys and all of their products so before i get into this video and ruin my life any further i'm going to be telling you a little bit more about balesa and why i like them and their products balesa is actually sponsoring this video today because they are dropping their brand new porn streaming service think netflix but porn so if you are 18 and up and you need a new place to watch porn, you need to go check out this service. The reason I actually got behind Balesa, no pun intended, <laughs> Their entire mantra is about female empowerment, females embracing their sexuality. They are an entirely women run, owned and operated company. And they are the only porn company in the world to let women actresses choose who they want to have sex with. And you're never going to be on Balesa and find an ad that makes you uncomfortable or a sex scene that makes you uncomfortable because everything is kind of based around what women want to see. And I think that that is so iconic and there should be so many more things like that. Women rule the fucking world. The fact that this is the only website I can even think of that is entirely based around women and what they want to see sexually and the only porn company in the world that is run by women everything they stand for is everything i stand for and i am obsessed and if you're looking for something to accompany you in checking out the balesa plus website balesa actually has a crazy amount of sex toys this is what my instagram story was just sponsored by because y'all know i will be getting in my bag for a vibrator balesa actually over the holidays helped me send so many of you guys free sex toys and it was super iconic seeing people like get those for christmas if you guys need a valentine's day gift i think a sex toy is a great valentine's day gift balesa's even harry jowsey approved Harry, yeah. I got you a gift for Christmas, but I forgot to give it to you. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. What is it? I got you a gift. Why are we laughing? <laughs> Why are we what laughing? Is it? Is Why it? are you terrified? You're so scared. Yeah, Hannah, what is it? Oh, I lit. I actually use these. Not on me, but on girls. Thank you so much. <laughs> I've never had a butt plug in my ass. When I had this threesome, I made sure both of them were plugged up. It's a vibe. When they come, it's like a little whole feeling. <laughs> a whole feeling. Oh my god. Have you fucked with these? <laughs> oh no, you didn't. I actually didn't do it with a oh. tissue, but I've never put it in my ass. I don't know. She fucked Jake's ass. See, that's what we don't do, motherfucker. Terry, you fucked Julia, so you kind of fucked Jake. <laughs> so we both word. fucked Jake. So as you can see, this is the Balesa Air. Nice eggplant vibe. You can be charging these, traveling with these. All of Balesa's products are actually also Cardi B approved. That was why I originally took the sponsorship. I was like, shit, if Cardi B is approving of it. At her birthday party, she gave every single person who attended a Balesa product. So that's really iconic. On top of having the Cardi B clout, they even collaborated with BuzzFeed and made the Balesa Air vibe. Very much Valentine's Day. Very much fuck my little pussy until I come. They're actually running an entire promotion right now where you can pay whatever you want, literally $1 to be subscribed and try it out. So I will be linking it below. And if you guys are in quarantine, and you are in the mood to jack off, go do it on Valesa Pro. People want better porn and people want ethical porn. Valesa has both and they are legitimately taking over the internet right now. And with the looks of everything I'm doing online right now, I'm sure before you know it, I'll have some videos on there myself. Thank you to Valesa for sponsoring this video. I genuinely believe in their message and it is a pleasure to work with them. So I'm gonna get into this video of the time that I almost walked down a very different path and maybe I'll. If I stay for even one more second in this intro, I'm probably going to have a scandal. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Something about this scene looks so incredibly innocent and nice and literally not one thing is innocent or nice about this video. Do y'all like my necklace? No reason I'm asking. But obviously before I get into the video, I'm just gonna catch up on reading this week's Us Weekly magazine. This is not a sponsorship. I just really like to go to Us Weekly for, you know, stuff about the royal family, behind the scenes of home alone they even have this amazing section where they show you the worst dressed celebrities of the week i'm fine i didn't think that was like a great outfit or anything like it's like totally fine the results of borrowing a toddler's shirt 
Great read. <laughs> I'm feeling messy this year. Not this week at all. Just the whole fucking year. Every single fucking day. Started this year off great with an amazing scandal. Obviously, if you've seen my last video, you know that I am just no longer holding back anything. Is that a little petty and dramatic and absolutely insane of me? Absolutely. Is that how I made my career on the internet? Absolutely. I really won't come for anyone unless they come for me. I feel like I'm a nice girl until not so nice people push my buttons. And then at that point, what do you what really do you have really to lose? telling the knowledge. truth. When it comes to that whole scandal involving my stellar ex-girlfriend, I'm playing that one by ear. It could end here. People want to keep doing things that aren't so great. I might keep doing things that aren't so great. I guess we'll just have to stay tuned. I'm seeing people buy some views. Caught that. So they're definitely trying to, you know, <laughs> With that being said, I'm already in a scandal for running my mouth far too much about the truth, so I might as well just double down and tell another story. Before all of this Bella drama happened, I had just gotten back on my story time kick. To be honest with you guys, after posting the Mindy and Jeff story, the next story I was going to sit down and tell is the one that I'm going to be telling you today. And then life happened. <laughs> and there were some other things I had to talk about. But I think now things are starting to settle down and you guys clearly still want nothing but story time petty Tana. Today's story is definitely one of the ones that I've held back for a very long time because of what I said after the Call Her Daddy interview. Is it my truth? Did it happen to me? Absolutely. Are people gonna be mad I'm telling this story? Absolutely. You guys definitely proved with the last story time that there's no lengths all of you won't go to to find whoever it is that I'm talking about. So I'm going to do my best today to protect the identity of some people mentioned in this story because the last thing I want is a text message or call from any of the people I'm about to tell this story about because it would just be so utterly fucking embarrassing. But seeing as the way this story ends, my entire life is an utter fucking embarrassment. So with that being said, I'm gonna get into today's video. There is no hurt on this planet like being left for a Kardashian or Jenner. <laughs> Unfortunately, I have had it happen to me multiple times at this point. Multiple Kardashians, multiple Jenners, I've been left for. And I'm gonna be real with you, if I was a rapper or an athlete, I would leave me for a Jenner or a Kardashian. Why wouldn't you? Like, Courtney or me? Like, I would pick Courtney too. But over time, you know, it doesn't get any less painful because it's like, there is no fighting for that person back. There is no, oh, I'm better. There's no, like, you picked her. There's no, like, your new bitch is gross. Like, it's a fucking Kardashian. It's a fucking Jenner. You are getting left for what is ultimately better than you, and it is never a great feeling. And today, I'm actually gonna be telling you a story about one of my favorite times I was left for a car Jenner. This one still pains me. I'll never know if I made the right decision. I will never know. I'll never fucking know. <laughs> So might look at this as an L. Most <laughs> will look at this as an L. But all you can really do when you're me is laugh through the pain and share the story. I'm gonna tell it to you and do with it what you will. This entire YouTube channel is really just a monologue of y'all learning from my mistakes. <laughs> That's what today is. <laughs> so I'm gonna throw it back. I'm going to throw it so far back that it's going to bring me different levels of trauma. It was Coachella. Tits were out. Motocross boots. Molly in the fucking desert with dip. You see the scene, you set the scene. I'm dating Mr. Bieber, Brad. <laughs> and him and I are on the verge of a very, 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 very rocky breakup. <laughs> Links below. If you haven't seen it, it's a fun roller coaster. I'm catching this man cheating on me at Coachella and then heading to Sunday service, which we're now finding out Jeffree Star might have been throwing neck at. As I'm catching my boyfriend cheating or whatever, I'm obviously scheming to break up with him. A lot of other factors are going on. That is a story one day that is just far too dark to ever tell on the internet. It will be put in a book. It is just, oh. Pray for that, Tana. Pray for that breakup. Pray for that man. Pray for that whole situation. Given how messy it is, I think that the level that you fuck on me in a breakup is the level of raging whore I'm about to be when we break up. So if you fuck with me to like a level seven, I'm probably gonna fuck seven rappers or athletes. Call it even. I don't know. I like to keep my level of savage to the level that I feel the other person deserves. Get it, Bella? See, it's like it's called an eye for an eye. I'm kidding. Not that I think two wrongs make a right, but sometimes I think that two dicks make a so as my boyfriend and I are breaking up, he's now leaving Coachella Valley. At this point, we could all lie and say that we don't have like prospects, but I think that maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm speaking for the toxic half of the community, okay? <laughs> but at least for me, in every relationship, especially an unhealthy one, you know, it's one thing if I'm like super healthy and happy, that's like a rare experience for me. So when that's happening, I'm not thinking about other people, obviously, but like if you are being toxic and shitty to me, I am absolutely thinking about who I'm going to date after you or who I'm going to slide in the DMs of at 3 a.m. after you and I break up. Like, 
like that's just I don't like to waste my time don't get me wrong like I'm gonna spend time getting over this person sometimes that's by getting under someone else there have been cases in life where I move very fast that is what this story is now I like to definitely take the time to like get over someone but I definitely used to be the type of bitch who would get over someone by getting under someone else it doesn't not work is it a distraction is it the healthiest thing ever I don't is it something I've done a lot? Absolutely. Am I working on it? Yeah. I hadn't really seen the bad effects of this method until I married I just realized the last time I was telling a story in a bed, I was crying about Alyssa Violet. <laughs> She's like mentally healthy now. She's like better now. She's like sober now. <laughs> so at this time, as my boyfriend and I were breaking up for the past couple months, in my toxic ways, I had two prospects. Two people that I knew. Three, really. One of them being Taylor Holder, but it was like that one was kind of a joke. Praise God, you know. But I had two very serious prospects where it was like, okay, I'm going to break up with my boyfriend and I'm going to text these two guys and say hi. <laughs> Go from there. Because these are the people that I have a missed or wanted my entire relationship. One of those prospects happened to be Jake. Before I started dating Brad, I'd hooked up with Jake. Throughout the duration of my relationship, I remember being like, I want to get at him. Like, he's hot. Like, I fucked that up. On top of it being Jake, right before I started dating Brad, I love how I'm just saying everyone's names. Like, just no fucks. I'm sorry. This is all public knowledge. I'm not even going to save you the fucking doozy of figuring it out. Like, you know. Right before I started dating Brad, I was on this dating app called Raya. I'm going to break down Raya for you for one second. It is the speed pass for clout chasing nasty LA whores. <laughs> it is like the fast track ride at Disneyland to a rapper's car. It is like a first class one way ticket to Charlie Puth and if you want to fuck a celebrity or athlete or rapper, you have a Raya. Name a bitch that you follow on Instagram. She is busting it on Raya. So I'm on Raya right before I'm about to date Brad. I didn't know we were going to date, so I was just swiping through men on this dating app, killing it. And this is also fucked up, and I no longer think like this. <laughs> I just want to preface that. Not my whole YouTube channel. I could title my memoir that. This is fucked up and I no longer think like this. But it's the truth. I definitely used to be like, okay, what archetype of guy do I want to date next? I don't think that's that bad. You know, like guys are like, oh, I want to date an athletic bitch. But I took it to an extreme that just wasn't okay. Like, you know, like I would date a rapper. I'd be sick of dating rappers. And I'd be like, okay, now I want to date an athlete. Now I want to date a musician. Now I want to date whatever. And Raya makes it even worse because people are literally organized on this app by what they do. So you can sit there and if you heart more athletes you will get more athletes if you heart more rappers you will get more rappers it's like the oprah for whoever you want to fuck that's a celebrity and so i've had all the phases you know i hearted djs to get more djs i hearted actors to get more actors I was ready to give it all up. This was before I knew that I was gonna like fall in love with Jake or whatever, like beside the point. And I was so fucking ready to be a basketball wife. The whole fucking nine. Khloe Kardashian getting cheated on by Tristan Thompson with fucking true in arm killing it. Like I, I was dead set on this. Name a basketball team, name a football team. I was matching with and dating their players, but there was this one athlete. And I really don't want to fed him out because he's genuinely one of the nicest people I've ever talked to in my life. He deserves none of this smoke. He deserves to be with anyone other than me. If anything, this entire story is really just about how this nice, successful man dodged a fucking bullet. And I just want to preface that. Like, honestly, great fucking guy. So I see him on Instagram a couple weeks prior, and I remember thinking to myself, like, this is the hottest athlete ever. And all of the people around me, like, all the guys in my life, all the straight guys in my life around me at this time were always talking about him, so obsessed with him like girls were always talking about how hot he was like I knew it was just a matter of time before some like badass bitch swooped this guy and to be honest with you I thought I had absolutely no chance with this man I was never going to slide in the DMs if I saw him on Raya I'd leave a heart but I would never expect a heart back like he can do so much better than me which he did that's the moral of the story but so I see this man on Instagram I'm like he's fucking perfect dream man whatever I'm now broken up with Brad and I began texting Jake and we're hanging out and we're like hooking up and as I'm doing this, I'm on Raya one day, and I get a direct request. A direct message request, which means like, Raya gives you this thing like once every like two weeks, and it's like you get one of them. It's like, it's like a Tinder super like, I guess is the best way to explain it. Like, it doesn't matter if the person likes you or not, like your like for them goes directly to their inbox. You get one of them every two weeks. And keep in mind, the bitches on this app are like Margot Robbie, Madison Beard, Corinna Koff, Alyssa Violet, Rihanna has been on Raya. Like the hottest bitches in the world. I would know the bisexual side is amazing.
thing. I need to chill. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I wake up one day to a direct request from this athlete. I kid you not, I dropped my phone and broke it. I'm going around to all of the guys in my life and they're like, no fucking way you have to marry this man. If you fuck up one thing, if you don't get fucking pregnant and get married happily ever after, if you fuck up one thing, you fucked up your entire life, you'll never do better. No one better will ever, 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 ever get at you. Spoiler alert. They were right. <laughs> 100% right. Let's say this guy's last name is fucking Smith. I go into full Mrs. Smith mode. I am ready to marry this man. I'm making sure every response I'm sending over text is flawless. I'm sending cute little photos. We start talking. We start texting every day. We're having great conversation. One thing too, a lot of athletes too are like older. They have kids or they don't party or they're like, you know, they've been fucking bitches in the game for so fucking long that they don't care. They're just like shut up and fucking bend over and be a basketball wife or fuck off and like a Jenner will do it, like literally. So not only for this guy to be like the hottest, one of the most successful athletes ever, everyone is obsessed with this man, but he's nice, he's funny. He's responding back to me fast, even when he's at practice for some of the biggest games that have ever been fucking played. So great. And he's secretly like very much like me, secretly very wild. So at this point, you know, I'm not sure if I'm about Jake yet, so I'm like sitting in Jake's bed, texting this athlete, kind of like deciding between the two. This story is so sad. <laughs> I actually just thought about like the outcome. And so eventually this athlete asked me on a date, our first date. He is definitely very much so, so famous that he could not just go sit down at a restaurant without the whole world thinking we were like dating as fuck. We both were like, let's take things slow. Like let's hang out somewhere. Let's be low key. Let's feel out the vibe. So he invites me over to his house, his three story house where we sit across the kitchen table from each other and the entire time him and his chef cook me and him like a four course meal together. You're a chef too? Being my dream man. So the whole time I'm just like, there's no way this guy is this perfect. Like this is so too good to be true. It's insane. We sit up on his roof and talk for like hours. It's this amazing conversation. We go into his room, we lay in his bed. He respectfully pecks me doesn't try to fuck. Hold on. I don't even know if I like that shit. Like that's borderline too respectful. Like disrespect me, fucking punch me and put your dick in me. But also, <laughs> we just get along. We have a lot of the same interests. Things are going well. We end up deciding to wait to hook up. I leave very cute. But then I do leave and go get railed by Jake because I didn't get dick. The next day I end up going back to this athlete's house and ironically we're sitting there talking, me and this athlete again, he's like cooking, nice ass, just perfect vibe. We're sitting there talking and he randomly brings up how Jake is one of his favorite online presences. And in that moment I'm sitting there like, this was before anyone knew anything about Jake and I. So in my eyes, I was like, this athlete just caught me. When he says that I'm sitting there eating and I choke on my food. And in my mind, I'm like, oh my God, this athlete just caught me being a trifling hoe with Jake Paul. So then I'm sitting there and I'm like, there's no way I'm fucking fucking up my life, my fucking future, my wedding with this man. What am I doing? I don't know. I get in my own head this whole time that he knows. And so then things are like escalating and like, it's such a vibe. You can tell we both want to hook up and we're just sitting there reviving, but I'm in my own head like there's no way I can sit here and like bust it for this man and be like a hoe if there's any part of him that thinks I'm also fucking Jake Paul because then he's just gonna think I'm for the streets so I need to like keep up my like I'm like a good girl like so that this man marries me and has children with me. So I'm like, I'm just gonna hold off. Like, I'm just gonna chill, like whatever. Things end very wholesome. He's like calling me baby, but then I leave and then I go to Jake's again. <laughs> this says so much about me. You know, there's this athlete that is just like good for me, like super normal, good guy, like would have been a very normal pal to take. And then there's this like toxic Especially at that time, the daddy issues were on 10, the life issues were on 10. There was no chance in hell I was not gonna gravitate towards the chaotic path. And that I did. So then now it's been like some nights of like me hanging out with this guy, us not really doing anything, going and getting my gut I'm chilling with it too. I'm like, Jake and I are gonna be fuck buddies. Like, I'm gonna keep talking to this guy. At the same time, I'm realizing as things are kind of escalating with this guy that I kind of need to like pick one. I'm thinking about that. As much as I'm making all of these jokes, like I also knew in my head I was happier and like having more fun with Jake. Whereas this would kind of just be me being like a little courtside bitch. And there was a part of me that wanted to be like a wild reckless YouTuber versus like a courtside pregnant wife. Which sucks now. I look back and I'm like, eh, could have been the courtside wife. Like, eh. I leave Jake's house that day thinking about all of this shit. And as I'm doing that, 
this athlete texts me and he's like being really sweet and he asks me to go on a trip with him to a foreign country he's like my jet leaves tomorrow please come i want to fly you out he was also insinuating that he wanted this to be like the first time we fuck like i should have gone <laughs> There is no excuse. I should have gone. I should have gone. Get on the fucking jet. Get on the fucking jet, you stupid. It doesn't even matter. I could have still ended up on the same trajectory, fucking married to fucking Jake Paul, Tana motherfucking Paul, but you could have at least gotten on the jet. You could have at least tried it. It's now making me nervous because this guy is so high profile that I know if we go on this trip, we're gonna get photographed together. Like, I also know that once I go on this trip, it's like I'm gonna be posting on this trip with him and people will know, including Jake. <laughs> so I kind of realized that I had to come to this life decision being okay with Jake being like, fuck this trifling bitch, and then saw me on a trip with this athlete, right? So then this athlete calls me and we're sitting on the phone and he's like basically saying like, I really like you, like I want you to come on this trip, you and me, like let's send it. And keep in mind, like I'd known about and wanted this athlete for so long for the entire duration of like my relationship with Brad afterwards he was one of my two prospects my prospect is getting at me my prospect wants to take me on a trip my prospect is ready to fuck me every step I put in to make this man fall in love with me worked he is asking me to go across the country with him on this plane as his bitch but I'm sitting there in the back of my head and I'm like the heart wants what it wants <laughs> which is so fucked Fucked. Do I want to continue to send the Jake hookup of it all? Or do I want to send marrying this athlete? Jake texts me in the middle of me texting this athlete, telling me to come over to play the sport that this athlete plays. And given my fucking 11-11, like fucking, it's a sign. I'm like, it's a fucking sign. I'm on the phone with this athlete. I cut out my sentence. And then he's just clowning me for being like super ADHD all over the place. But like as an endearing joke, like he's just saying, you know what I mean? Like I'm asking you something so seriously and you were about to answer he's basically saying that to me as a joke and then he says this this to me a sentence that i truly think changed the trajectory of my life he says i just did blank with these youtube kids i'm not gonna say what he did because i don't want people to fucking look it up he makes a joke about how he was just with jake and logan paul <laughs> and how the way i act reminds him of them what, what kind of tea you spilling <laughs> oh my god <laughs> so sorry I'm i leaving, love I'm your leaving. sports <laughs> This Good season last season, man. I just shaved my asshole yeah. and it kind of hurts a little bit. That's and then, fucking like, cool. And then it's really cool. <laughs> Did that happen? What's up? Oh, no, nothing really. What are you telling? A story about. <laughs> Stop. I can't. You, oh. He's probably. What are you? <sighs> your, your biggest hell you've taken. For some reason, I interpret what this man says. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, I know that interpreting and assuming this was the biggest mistake of my life. <laughs> but I interpret what he says about Jake and Logan to me as him insinuating that he knows that I'm also fucking Jake. He already made that one comment about Jake, now he's making this other comment about how I'm just like him. Like, how are you gonna make so many fucking comments about Jake Paul if you don't know that I'm being a trifling hoe with him? And again, this was before anything was public knowledge, so the only way this athlete would have known is if he knew, you know? And so, I'm like, uh, uh, uh. I assume he's saying, I know you're fucking Jake. And if you don't stop and go on this trip on this plane with me, like, I know. So what I do next is the most unchill thing you could ever do to an athlete, let alone a I tell him I'm gonna call him back and I hang up and I take what he said as he knows and my decision is made, it's a sign. Jake texts me, you know, asking to play the sport that this guy plays, like what more signs could you have? And so I decide that I'm going to ghost this athlete and go for Jake Paul. Go to Jake's house, we hook up. I wake up the next morning and I see that this athlete has gone on this trip that he just invited me on alone. He took the jet alone. He's posting it on his Instagram story. I feel kind of terrible. I'm like, shit, like maybe I should go on this trip. Maybe I should like, you know, text him. You know, it's not too late. I ghosted him. He went, he definitely doesn't love me, but like I could fix it. I could respond, respond to the story. story. I could meet I him could there. I could, I could still save what could be my future with this fucking man. And so I get up, I'm getting on my phone. I'm about to text this athlete and I'm about to be like, what's up? Like, I'm so sorry. I, I, my, I, I'm sorry. And make amends. And as I open my phone to text this athlete, I am getting a thousand texts, the top one being from Keemstar, to let me know that an Instagram story with Jake Paul's headboard in it is going viral. You know this moment for very, very many reasons. You know, would there have even been a wedding if it wasn't for this moment? We don't fucking know. I'm like, okay, damage control. I'm gonna figure it out. And so a few hours go by and I receive some texts from this athlete enlightening me that he has seen the virality of the fact that I'm fucking Jake Paul and he hopes I have a nice life. <laughs> 
he says it in a much nicer way. It's, it's more of just like a, we're gonna be great friends. Like he's a nice fucking guy. I was the trifler here. I've made my bed and now I have to lie in it. But here's the problem with lying in that bed. It is not now that I've made my decision that I am on the road to becoming a Paul and don't even know it yet. It's more so that this athlete before I say it, before I hurt myself and you as the viewer and just anyone who has any sense for any decision I've ever made, I don't know if what he did was out of spite to me. If anything, he could have just been coming to his senses, picking up another hoe on his Rolodex and moving on. Maybe this girl was his hoe the entire time. Maybe we were sharing, you know, we don't know. I spend the next few days mildly watching and keeping up with what this athlete is doing. And I see the next day that he makes the decision to fly home back to LA and pick up a girl to take her back to the destination that he asked me to go to. That would've hurt already! That would've hurt already! With any bitch! But it was a Jenner. He flew back to LA, picked up a Jenner, and flew her to the destination we were supposed to be in, and I found out on Daily Mail. Daily Mail! And I get it! I get it! It is karma for being a dumb, dumb bitch. It never hurts any less. To see this Jenner just wrapped up with this man as if they have been together for years. He just made me dinner last week! But I have no room to be mad. The only person I'm yelling at is myself. You sat there and looked at your two paths. Basketball wife or Paul. And you chose Paul. Don't act like I wasn't thinking about this fucking athlete walking down the aisle. And then the rest of his career has just been beautiful. He has done nothing but succeed and then double and triple He has done nothing but get hotter. He has done nothing but day hotter bitches. He has done nothing but become more well-dressed, more in He dodged a bullet though <laughs> by choosing a Jenner over me. To be honest with you, I have thought about this in excess. I see this decision in my sleep paralysis. I will be on my deathbed. My life would be so different right now, if you even think about it, you know? But at the same time, I do think that I went down the path that was intended for me, question mark. I don't know what the fuck that means. To this athlete, if you see this and you are ever single, I am so sorry. It's just laughable. Like, there's just no world where this man will ever give me the time of day again. I fucked it up. It is a lifelong L. I've seen him multiple times since then, too. I've seen him out at restaurants, at clubs, and he literally might as well dap me up like a brother and look through me. That man took every ounce of giving a fuck about me or thinking I was attractive and just fucking... Literally. Make better decisions than me, y'all. In the world of Paul's, <laughs> think the athlete. I'm kidding. Again, I- I don't regret my decision at all. Who says that, you know, I, this athlete would've even been the one? Who knows? Yeah, I'm gonna go cry about it. I chose Jake Paul over one of the biggest athletes in the world and he immediately replaced me with a Jenner. And it never won't hurt. <laughs> with that being said, if you guys would like more stories about how I've been replaced by Kardashians or Jenners in my entire life, I have a Rolodex. Again, if you like my necklace, that's it. That's the whole sentence. I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Maybe I'll listen next time. <laughs> Bye. Like what face says like I was left for a Jenner?